Nagraj. He is currently working as assistant professor in the Department of Chemistry, Anna University, Chennai. Earlier, he worked as a scientist in charge at Spices Board of India for five years in research and development, and also in quality control laboratory. He has finished his PhD in organic chemistry at IIT Delhi. He has also done his MSc Chemical Science at Pondicherry Central University. He has published six papers in international journal and also participated several international events in India and abroad. He has attended several conferences and delivered lecture as keynote speaker and also undergone dual training programs. His area of research interests are isolation, synthesis of natural products and evaluation of their biological activities, carbohydrate-based natural product synthesis, enzyme catalyst organic synthesis, green chemistry medicinal aspects of spices and spice products. Welcome to UGC lecture series in polymer science. Today we are going to study about uh, fiber science and rubber technology that is the broader area uh, especially uh, fibers what are all fibers and the history, the basic things we are going to study in this class. Today content of this uh, lecture is a history of fibers and the basics of fibers, uh, sources of fibers, fibers from its raw material. So, these are all the things we are going to study in detail. Again fibers from plants, fiber is the material which is a, a thread like uh, material which can be fabricated which is used for clothing as well as some other properties. Uh, at least a few lectures we are going to study fibers and the classification of fibers and uh, application properties of fibers. So, in this lectures we are going to study small introduction of fibers and its availability. Fibers from plants, so which is importance of fiber is uh, historical importance and the present day day to day uh, importance. Uh, not only natural fibers, uh, synthetic fibers also having a lot of importance. In case of botanical uh, fibers which is made up of what and uh, which class of or which family of plant can produce fibers, that details we can go into study. Uh, types of fibers here, seed hairs are fibers uh, which is isolation and processing, uh, similarly soft are bast fibers, same isolation and processing. Uh, third class is uh, hard or vascular fibers. So, based on the types, we can uh, make it a three types, uh, which we can go into study in detail. Uh, other classification also available, where uh, textile or apparel fibers, uh, which is uh, related to textile material and uh, plating are coarse fibers, which is again subdivided like uh, cordage fibers, brushes or braiding fibers, uh, stuffing materials, paper and uh, which is also economic importance of uh, fibers. Papers uh, also made up of fibers uh, which is a different uh, monomer again which undergo polymerization will produce this kind of selective material. Uh, depend upon the monomer or nature of monomer uh, the fiber, uh, fiber content will vary. Uh, small introduction of fibers, cotton fibers were gathered, spun and twisted at least 10,000 years ago in Beru, which is a long back, uh, very old history which is behind in fibers, uh, 10,000 year old uh, material fibers which is known in first in Beru. And the flax was woven and domesticated in the near east uh, at least 8,000 years ago approximately 1000 years before the domestication of sheep. So, this is another class of fiber also which is known approximately 8000 years. So, overall the fibers and the fiber related material which is not a new one which is known long back in the history approximately 10000 years old material which is still very demand in the industry and application also very high. Animal fibers such as wool have also been widely used. Flax replaced the wool in Europe for clothing. In case of uh, Europe, normally the temperature will be very low, uh, where instead of using this kind of uh, wool, 
which is a very very important which is a kind of warming material in, in place of cold candies uh, we need a warming cloth uh, which is uh, uh, flax which is replaced wool in Europe for clothing materials and to a botanist a fiber is an elongated cell with thick walls and tapering ends as a botanically we can say which is a thick wall fiber material having very thick wall then only which can withstand or withhold some kind of temperature or pressure within the material uh, which is applicable for this kind of purpose in commerce means industry wise uh, or application wise fibers may be single cell or hundreds of cells fibers may vary from fraction of millimeter to 2 meters in length so again fiber is a thread like material the range or length of or uh, breadth of material will vary normally the lowest one is millimeter and the uh, lengthiest or highest one is meters in length most plant fibers are comprised of cellulose they are more stable to heat than are animal fibers so in stability wise uh, plant based fibers are more stable than animal based fibers uh, most of the plant based fibers are uh, cellulose uh, which is again a polymer of uh, uh, mono, monomer as a glucose which made polymerization will undergo it will, it will produce a polymer which is cellulose all the plant material which is having cellulose a part of a fiber uh, plant fibers also have different properties when dyed and usually require more complex treatment to cause adherence of the dyes so again the plant material uh, which is made up of uh, cellulose uh, during dye process uh, the property of the material which will vary widely many fibers are too slick short or brittle to be spun into threads a kapok fiber is too slick to spin into thread but it is used to make a stuffing or packing some fibers are used to make paper so this fiber material which is uh, while making thread shape some of them which will get breakdown uh, frequently some of them which will be slick in nature so it is very difficult to twist that material so still some of the material having very good uh, property to make these kind of things uh, some we can easily make as a paper kind of fiber fibers can be classified by their uses are the part of the plant they are from uh, that means fiber can be obtained either any part of the plant maybe it may be stem of the plant or it may be uh, fruits or seed of the plant or it may be leaves leaves of the plant or it may be uh, some material which can produce any part of the plant based on that the application and other things may vary fibers are used for textiles brushes plating or coarse weaving stuffing material paper and specialty goods so this is uh, application part of uh, fibers so this kind of fibers can be utilized like this in various uh, industries cotton flax rami and hemp are most often used for apparel or textile fibers so whatever discussed in this uh, all the material which is used in class of uh, textile fibers where cloth and other things which can be made from this kind of fibers jute cotton hemp abaca sisal uh, new zealand flax and mauritius hemp are most often used for cordage so this is a, again uh, cordage is a class of uh, packing material which can be made from uh, the list of um, raw material which will produce uh, fibers which can be used for this kind of packing materials and uh, we already discussed previously those material which is used for cloth or textile industries isli sisal piasava and uh, broomkan are most often used for brushes or braiding fibers so this is a relatively very hard uh, the property so which is used for uh, brushes and uh, braiding fibers kapok cotton spanish moss and uh, jute are most often used for filling fibers so apart from that uh, this material which is uh, used in filling while making the fibers
broadly we can see what are all uh, textile fibers and its utility uh, textile fiber cotton related to fibers which is used exclusively uh, in textile industry uh, which we can see here textile fibers are primarily grouped into seed and fruit fibers soft are vast fibers and hard are leaf fibers so this is how they are uh, grouping textile fibers are as a kind of fruit fibers uh, bast fibers and hard or leaf fibers bast fibers come from the phloem tissues of dicotyledonous plants uh, monocotyledone dicotyledone two types of plants dicotyledone means uh, the plant while growing it will produce two equal shaped uh, leaf that is called uh, dicotyledone that kind of uh, plants the xylem phloem two things which is available in the stem Uh, xylem will pass uh, this kind of material like uh, water and other uh, uh, minerals to the plant phloem will pass the food material uh, from the plant so phloem may act as a bast fibers which is a very hard in nature another category is the hard fibers come from the leaves of certain monocotyledonous plants so again hard fibers will come from leaves of monocotyledon means single leaf produced in the first that kind of uh, class of plant which is called monocotyledon that will produce leaf fibers then bast fibers in detail bast fibers are removed from plant material by retting which is a process where you can get the fiber material the cell wall of soft bast or true fibers are cellulose and are not easily broken down by bacteria so this is a very very important point uh, for this uh, fiber that means which is uh, not easily get affected by bacteria that means the stability towards a microorganism which is very high that means easily uh, no microorganism bacteria fungus can attack this kind of fiber material uh, in retting the plant material is placed in water or kept wet while anaerobic bacteria digest away most of the plant tissues except the fiber i told uh, bast fibers are uh, getting from uh, the process is retting uh, retting nothing but the fiber material which is dipped in the water or make it wet or soak into the water uh, what will happen except the fiber material which is very stable towards bacteria or microorganism uh, means other than fiber material that will be uh, taken from the bacteria so that our fiber material which will be free from other material so we can easily separate from other material this is one of the uh, easy techniques uh, namely retting the remaining material is bent sharply to break the remaining vascular materials away from the true fibers so again one more step you can do the bend so you will remove uh, other material which is present along with fiber material the material is then beaten and scraped sketching and the fibers compound to align them so what we have to do which is a rough in nature you have to beat it to make it soft and make it fiber maybe it may be like a leaf or stem you have to make it doing all these three process you can make it a fiber shape for hard fibers the plant material is crushed and the soft tissues scraped away this process is called decorticating decorticating again the material which is the soft tissues which will be removed from the hard fiber ginning is used to remove the seed fibers from the seeds like a cotton which is a seed fiber With using this ginning process we can remove seed from the fibers uh, the fibers are also combed and cleaned and uh, next one is uh, fibers may then be bleached or otherwise treated to prepare them for use so this is uh, another process uh, where you want to uh, remove seed from the fiber material you have to go for ginning the process uh, where you can separate seed from the uh, fiber and if the fiber material the color if you want to get enhanced you have to do another process which is a uh, bleaching where the color will get enhanced to normal color Uh, next is uh, seed and uh, fruit fibers 
the most important seed fiber is cotton uh, very very eminent and uh, uh, available in the large scale uh, cotton seeds have properties that permit them to be spun into thread so this is the peculiar property of the cotton seeds cotton is the most important fiber in the world today and is according to some sources the most important non food plant commodity so that is very very important it is a cotton plant which is not a food oriented plant uh, which is clothing or fiber oriented plant exclusively which is used for to get the fiber uh, entire world community which is uh, looking or demanding this kind of cotton fibers cotton production today is highly mechanized in most countries this plant produces textile that dye well with uh, and withstand vigorous washings this is the peculiar property of uh, cotton where it have to uh, adhere the dye whatever color material you want to add to cotton fiber which will adhere adhere means it will stick on it uh, it will not go away by doing vigorous washing while washing our cloth the dye if it's gone out then that material is a poor material it doesn't have adhering property well in case of cotton uh, which is having very good adhering property where the coloring material or dyes can which attach with the cotton fiber uh, more strongly even you do a vigorous washing uh, many times the dyes will not uh, removed from the cotton uh, cotton is an epidermal hair of the seed coat there are both short and long hairs cotton seeds uh, which is surrounded by the fibers uh, the fibers length may vary uh, depend upon the variety of cotton some of them having very lengthy fibers some of them having uh, short fibers the short hairs are removed before the seeds are used for oil expression so this is uh, again a cotton seed which we can take oil from cotton seeds before taking the oil the small hairs that means fibers which should be completely removed here the picture shows and this is the flower of cotton and this is a small uh, cotton ball uh, which is uh, produced after the flower uh, shown here in the picture uh, here this is the cotton field uh, where uh, one plant can produce uh, many cotton balls after the ripen it will produce a uh, fiber this picture shows that exclusive fiber material from cotton where inside the fiber material uh, cotton seed which may be available inside so this is uh, what a hair long hair or short hair depend upon the length of the material can be discussed uh, this is a uh, cotton gin and the cotton bells and oklahoma which is a uh, first industry where uh, uh, for removal of uh, cotton uh, fiber from the cotton seed uh, which is uh, this is the industry which is uh, in, uh, means uh, constructed first in oklahoma where the large amount of cottons where uh, fibers can separated from the cotton seeds cotton was so domesticated in both the old and the new world so the ancestry of cotton is complex and there is not complete agreement about these origins still the demand of cotton is uh, very high and not only uh, present days the old days also the requirement or uh, uses of cotton is very high but there is no evidence says that cotton origin of cotton so where it comes and how it spread to the world there is no proper history available but a cotton was domesticated in south central asia and fabrics from pakistan appears about 3000 bc these were from either g arboreum or herbaceum so this is a plant botanical name uh, which is generally central asia received this kind of cotton in 3000 bc that means long back ago by the 15th century cultivation of these two species had reached into europe from the arabs arabs belongs to again central asia from there uh, to europe which is spread in 15th century means after long period which is uh, means 3000 bc then later 15th century only it is reached to europe countries and uh, both have largely been replaced by new world cultivators though these two varieties replaced by all the existing uh, old varieties by these recent years 
The two species of cotton were also domesticated in, in the new world. Both involves an old world parent. Genes from this parent are now estimated to have arrived in the Americas more than 1 million years ago. So, another history says that which is, um, is uh, tested in the gene of the cotton fiber uh, which indicates that uh, which is came from the origin from America, US for 1 billion years ago. That means uh, there is no proper history which is available for cotton. Columbus observed cotton in the new world when he came to America. Gossipium heristum cotton accounts for 95 percent of the cotton cultivated. So, most of the cottons, this is the variety, uh, mostly 95 percent of this variety which is cultivated. Columbus, uh, while uh, finding the America there, that time the cotton which is available in the America. Barbadans, uh, Sea Island, Egyptian or Pima, cotton was probably cultivated earlier and was used by about 8000 BC. Uh, weaving was an integral part of the culture in the Inca Empire in the 13th and 14th century. So, the history says that uh, cotton material which is a very very old material uh, which is spread all over the world, all countries which is available, some of the variety which is available, 95 percent in the entire world. Cotton did not uh, become a major crop, however, until 1794 uh, when Eli Whitenley invented the cotton gin. Uh, so, earlier which is not uh, that much uh, application or uh, uses after he uh, uh, find out the gin from cotton then the application starts increase cotton then become the major crop in many areas of the southeastern us so people are started cultivating this cotton the cultivation of cotton was one of the major factor that lead to slavery in us and that is again uh, the once the this fellow Eli Whitley invented the cotton gene, later the cultivation of cotton gene increased in US all over US especially the southern east uh, southeastern US. Once this is started, then lot of uh, people recurred to plantation and uh, cultivation and the crop uh, removing all this purpose. Then slavery system which is starts from uh, this uh, situation. The invention of the cotton gene permitted cotton to be the basis of one crop economy. Uh, this one crop economy was destroyed by the ball we will about 1900. Since that time agriculture has diversified greatly in the south. So, one crop means uh, people have to uh, cultivate only this one which is a very very important material. So, people uh, uh, there is no diversification for cultivation. People accepted and did this is the major crop for their livelihood. Cotton fibers are then processed extensively. The fibers are carded and twisted into slivers. That means, this is the processing part how you can do the uh, make the cotton fibers to fiber model. You have to do the carded and twisted into slivers. The fibers are then drawn, cleaned, uh, mercized. Uh, means soaked with sodium hydroxide under pressure and finally sized with substances such as starch or gel. <coughs> so, these are all the again the process uh, where you need to follow sequence of process in order to get from cotton gel to fiber material. After being woven, the fabrics are treated with ammonia to reduce sinkage on washing. You treat with uh, ammonia, ammonia is normally basic solution. Uh, if cotton fibers which is have any acidic uh, uh, acidic uh, chemicals or something available in cotton uh, which will neutralize by ammonia and moreover it will give some basic things over it. So, what will happen this will give the property of the fibers which will not undergo shrinkage uh, while washing or doing any other treatment. Permanent uh, press fabrics now decreases the need for ironing. So, this is again uh, important property no need to do ironing while if you have a fiber which is a permanently uh, st steady or uh, very stick in nature. The former USSR, uh, China, USA and uh, India are major cotton producing countries till today and the uh, cotton seeds is widely used as an edible oil source. There are some problems with the toxicity however, 
which is used regularly. So, cotton seeds uh, have the property which is a special property like uh, fabrics which is have a very which does not have a sinkage property and that means that no need to do ironing again and again. So, one time you do it and you uh, ready made cloth material which is available. So, most probably this um, USSR uh, now which is broken down to smaller countries uh, now Russia and China, USA and India are major cotton producing countries. They are producing large quantities of uh, cotton especially in India Mumbai is the Manchester of cotton. Uh, in America which is a Manchester which is a large uh, quantity of cotton which is cultivated and produced as well as consumed via clothing material. Cotton seed uh, is again widely used as an uh, edible oil source so, means uh, from seed uh, I already discussed the cotton seeds uh, the small hair or fibers should be completely removed then only which can undergo for uh, this kind of uh, oil purpose which is have some kind of toxicity which is not advised to eat as uh, such you can mix with something else or you have to do further treatment uh, before consuming it. So, overall we have seen fibers, uh, water all fibers material uh, and its uh, definition and uh, especially for history of fiber material where it is the origin uh, the history which is says that uh, which is uh, 1 billion years old material which is uh, origin from America, uh, Columbus invented America before that several uh, years ago the cotton material which is available then which is uh, started from Central Asia which is uh, slowly migrated to uh, Europe countries and there uh, one of the varieties which is all over the world 95 percent which is cultivated uh, after the Winley which is uh, he identified uh, cotton gin then the cultivation of cotton which is uh, drastically increased and not only India all over the world that material which is increased. The material the fiber material which is uh, again processing which is uh, easy and you will get a very good fiber that fiber material which is used for most probably in the field of uh, textile industry uh, which is widely used. Uh, now the production still uh, some of the area where the sunlight which is a maximum and uh, the cotton plant which will consume less water and it will produce uh, more material which is again not food plant which is only for fiber plant which is produced and the process where some of the process which is available uh, from cotton seeds to uh, fiber material conversion some of the chemical method uh, which we have to undergo that all we have studied and again the sources of uh, fibers uh, we have seen seed fiber which is a uh, cotton and uh, apart from that there are leaf fiber and uh, stem fiber uh, most of them which is made up of uh, cellulosic material that we will study in the future uh, forthcoming class. Fibers from it is a raw material again a raw material which is seed uh, fiber uh, cotton is the basic and easily widely available raw material that we have seen in details and uh, some of the questions for this lecture is um, what, are, what are fibers and uh, raw material for fibers again we discussed what are the raw materials and again types of fibers we discussed seed based fibers, uh, stem based fibers and uh, leaf based fibers that we discussed and the properties of fibers especially this kind of clothing properties uh, which is having a special property like a shrinkage which will not be there if you treat with uh, cotton seeds in uh, ammonia that and all we studied in details. So, within this session uh, we conclude today's session uh, thank you.